Hello and welcome to To The Point. Today we have Mr. Ravi Shankar Prashad, the newly appointed Deputy Leader of Opposition in Rajya Sabha. He also happens to be a very senior leader of BJP, General Secretary in fact, and the national spokesperson of his party. Mr. Prashad, welcome to the show. Thank you. Point by point to the point, sir. Of late, uh, the BJP has been very critical of uh, the government's economic policies. What exactly you want the Prime Minister to do? Well, we have been saying it over the years. India's growth story has come under serious questioning. Mm -hmm. Hardly a month ago, I was in New York. And the investors of America, Indian and also American, who have invested in India, forced me to come and speak to them because they are losing hope. This is not only a question of investors, price rise. Indian investors are also very cagey about investing in India. Manufacturing is down, export is down, import is down, your, uh, the worth of our rupee is down. Therefore, I would like to know from you, what is the area of promise in the Indian economy that I should not question about, question about that. But you had promised uh, n number of uh, conveniences to the government that you would be uh, working with the government, say, on uh, foreign direct investment. If you uh, want to clarify that, what exactly is your position? First of all, be very clear about it. FDI is not the only solution of all the problems of Indian economy. Why you need FDI to improve uh, the situation on inflation? Is there in proper consensus within the government about the need of FDI? FDI in detail, that you are talking to us. And secondly, always remember, every change of policy is not a reform. And the Indian scenario... But you do need a change. We do need a change, but the responsibilities of the government, on the pension regulatory fund, on the insurance fund, we have cooperated. But cooperation cannot be one-way traffic. But again, don't forget, it is Dr. Manmohan Singh-led Congress government, along with the UPA, which is in power not the BJP. Therefore, for the last nine years, the obligation to run the government is yours. We are willing to cooperate, but you cannot shift your own lapses on our shoulders. Being the newly appointed uh, deputy leader of the opposition, uh, the first from your state, uh, in fact, uh, I would presume, uh, how do you foresee your role, a very important role, uh, the spotlight is on you? Well, I am told I am the first from Bihar to become the Deputy Leader of Opposition, the Deputy Leader of the BJP Parliamentary Party in the Raj Sabha. I am grateful to my party, to Advani ji, to Arun ji, to Sushma ji, Kad Kadkari ji, for having nominated me. Uh, this is my third term in the Raj Sabha. One good thing about Raj Sabha, it is a continuing house, unlike the Lok Sabha. But yes, Deputy Leader is a good platform for you to shine and also to know many things. For instance, I think I should speak less now and it is important that others should be made to speak. Who should speak? I must spot the talent in my own party, the newcomers, their interest, their taste, articulating my party's concern, coordination between the opposition and the government. All these things are very interesting, uh, I would say challenges and it is my first session, monsoon session. Being a good learner, which I hope I am, I think I will do, I will try to do a good job of myself. Average age of a parliamentarian in the upper house is also coming down and a lot of people are matching your... your uh... now, what is wrong with that? India is a young country. It, was, it is conventionally known as a house of elders. No, nothing wrong, but then you would have to uh, hunt for a new talent, as you said, you have to no, spot new talent to... Spot new talent within my parliamentary party, not an outside. And I am sure in the around 50 Rasawa members which we have. Do you do have good speakers, I am told? Yes, uh, we have very good speakers. They are doing very well. And uh, our leader, Arun Jaitley himself, is a very extraordinary speaker on a variety of subjects. Uh, as uh, earlier I used to also speak, we have many other very outstanding speakers, very experienced. We have Shanta Kumar, we have Prakash Jaudekar, we have Najma Haftullah, we have new general secretary, Dharmen Pradhan and Jagat Prakash Nadda. We have Rajiv Pratap Ruhi, an old experienced hand. We have many other seasoned uh, members who have been senior political figures in the state who are now here. 
it is a very good combination of political experience articulation ministerial experience and parliamentary experience party is nonetheless rich in uh, talent in your in that way i must tell you we are very proud of the bjp being not a family concern i should be very frank to you the party promotes i always say i began my political activism more than 35 years ago at my college level then graduation at the uh, university level then there's district level the state level the i was going level. through your bio data you have also been general secretary of pucl in your state yes in a way what I was used, your experience of when i used to rights, practice sir. in patna high court yeah, yeah. Uh, in fact jay prakash narayan ji loknayak jay prakash narayan and mr vm tarkunde they tutored me into the larger canvas of human rights and i i even the left people used to unanimously elect me and i said i may differ with you politically but i will fight to the last for your human rights because human right is very important you must be equal to the concerns of all as far as violation of human rights is concerned my problem is in india uh, of late human right debate is becoming very much one sided uh, that's my comment is about but yes i learned a lot uh, the kind of injustice the suffering of the poor people at the ground level while working in the pucl lovely we'll continue talking to you uh, mr prashad we'll come back after a very short break welcome back you're watching to the point and we have our distinguished guest tonight mr ravi shankar prashad the newly appointed leader of opposition the deputy leader of opposition in rajya sabha prashad sir the monsoon session has not many days of uh, legislative business as compared to the budget session what bills you would like to see the government must take up as a priority in this session you see bringing a bill is the responsibility of the government articulating issues of public concern is the priority of the opposition this is how it goes and in my new role as deputy leader i have been insisting we must have a proper combination you bring your governmental business of bills etc because only the government can consider as to which bill is of priority for instance the new bill relating to uh, violence with women you know it is a very important bill a lot of university related bills are there uh, but as far as we are concerned price rise drought um, floods you know uh, 100 people died in the amarnath yatra you like that to be debated then there are other pressing issues the controversial bill of uh, lokpal if uh, the nomenclature and the uh, you, uh, we would like this bill to be presented in this session we are very clear about it and we hope the select committee would expedite the process no, now that you are in uh, a very key position uh, you would uh, foresee the marshaling of this bill i'm sure uh, maybe in the last we, we week we will the... try our best that it must be done this is how i see it so coming back to your party politics you belong to bihar you are in a uh, coalition government there the jdu leader of late uh, has been uh, talked about mr nitish kumar uh, would you like to comment on uh, his uh, as as the television uh, journalist would say his trp going up was always that a uh, lot of people are saying uh, commenting that he is a better prime ministerial candidate compared to mr modi i would like to have your pointed view on that first of all let me clarify one thing mr nitish kumar to be precise is with the bjp for the last 18 years we have fought five lok sabha elections together we have fought four vidhan sabha elections together so we know each other's dna too well don't go by media reports narendra modi an outstanding governance record in the state of gujarat talked nationally and also internationally bihar record is equally good but as far as who will be the prime ministerial candidate if you ask me very frankly nidish kumar also agreed bjp being the largest party you would like to have a candidate of the bjp to be projected as the prime minister who would be will be decided by the party's parliamentary board which mr advani ji or nitin gadkari but Sushma mr advani has in his block said uh, that uh, there's a unlikely Uh, position uh, which BJP or or Congress would uh, uh, take up as uh, 
the 2014 elections. Uh, no, norm, normally, I, we never comment on Mr. Advani's blog. But since you have read an, uh, raised an issue, Advani is obviously our tallest leader. We all have great regard and respect for him. He, he said one line. But next line he says, if at all any non-Congress or non-BJP leader emerges the Prime Minister, it will be inherently unstable. And the BJP will get the rich dividend because of the gross misrule of the UPA government. The same blog says that, but the great uh, media people, you included, glossed over that very conveniently and highlighted only no, one sir, line. Not the gloss, but uh, uh, it is recognized and well established fact that BJP had got about 800, 8 crore votes uh, in the last election. Therefore, and, see, and as, since you talked about Advani's blog, I put the record straight. I am very clear 2014 is not far away. India's Polity has become bipolar. I have got the highest respect for regional parties. They are important parties. But the days of Mr. Deve Golas and Chandrasekhar Ji's and the Indra Gujarals are over. Due respect to them. The country needs a stable government in coalition, obviously. And that coalition must be head by a bigger party around whom the smaller do revolve. That is the whole... When you talk of coalition, we have regional outfits. And when the national elections takes place, the national parties do not get more seats than required. I mean, they, they fail to match that threshold point of 272 seats on their own. That is where the problem lies. You do encourage regionalism. Uh, but at the uh, time uh, of the, formation the, 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 of there government... There is no debate about that. It is a coalition era. We wish that one gets a majority on its own. But the Congress party, which has ruled for more than 40 years nearly on its own, is also not getting for the last 20 years. They got 11 crore votes and you got uh, 8 crore. Don't go by crores of vote. Go by exact seats. I understand the voting point. Go by seats. Therefore, it is a coalition era. We have to accept it. But the difference between the BJP and the Congress coalition is when we are in coalition, we don't uh, cross swords with our allies in the state from which they come. If Akali is in Punjab, we are in alliance with them. If JDU is in Bihar, we are in alliance with them. If Shishana is in Maharashtra, we are in alliance with them. And then also with TDP and others. But we don't do as Congress does. Delhi mein pyar aur Lucknow mein takrar. That is not the sign of a very stable government. Lovely. A stable coalition. We continue talking to Mr. Ravi Shankar Prashad after a very short break. Welcome back. You are watching To The Point and today we have Mr. Ravi Shankar Prashad, the newly appointed Deputy Leader of Opposition in Raj Sabha. Ravi ji, now that you are occupying a very important position, the Deputy Leader of uh, Opposition in Raj Sabha, where do you think the Indian polity is going in which direction? You as one of the youth icons of your state, uh, people aspire to become uh, what you are. The coalition politics uh, is what coalition politics is. The national parties do not get more seats to cross, as I was saying earlier, to 272 seats in the parliament. The economy, as you said rightly, the government is faulting and there is a policy paralysis, as you have been commenting in the past. Where do you think the national politics is taking you? You see, I am a very chronic optimist. I have a great trust in the good future of India. And I have infinite belief in the infinite capacity of the young people of India. Now, what is the positive side of Indian democracy? That's very important to note. People of the country now know that they can defeat any political party, howsoever big, and any political leader, howsoever popular whether in a state or in the center, to the power of their vote. That they know. Our democracy is a big leveler. Now, the second change which has come about is, people reward those who are performers. The days of anti-incumbency is going. People punish who fail. The development is a big plank. Good governance and development and pro-poor Pro-growth polity is occupying center stage. That's a very good thing. 
but it is an aspirational India. Our young people, dynamic, creative, hard-working youth of the country must be given a vision and hope for the future. That is my take on the politics of India. And that is my collective endeavour must be of all the political parties. Do you think that you are attracting enough talent towards politics? First of all, good people are coming. But what I appeal today is good people needs to come. You know, you just talked about my profile. Behind this profile lies hard work of 35 years. Going to jail in the JP movement, suffering Lati's blow, completing my education, doing professionally well, Arun Jaitley, Sushma Swaraj, Advani ji. But you belong to an era when there was no cell phone, no internet, no telephony. And this is an age where it's, it's a fast food joint. There I differ with you. Those who are on internet and cell phone are more concerned about the quality of India, the future of India, because they have got the instrument to have an immediate comparison. You go to the internet, you go to the Facebook, you see their uh, comments and their grief. Therefore, all this is a concern for India out of love for India. And those who are in politics, opposition or government need to realize that the vast potential of young India waiting to explode constructively for the good of India. That is my take on politics. And therefore, I always feel very strongly that good promising young man must come in politics. You have taken over at a time on a very auspicious note, if I may uh, point out. For the last eight years, no parliamentary session had started with a legislative business on the very first day as this session, the day when you took over as <laughs> the deputy it is, it is, leader. It is just a coincidence. My view is, Indian parliament is the biggest panchayat. It is not a house of lord or American congress simpliciter. The people look up to the parliament. At times we... You are the senior lawmakers uh, of the country. At times we... Pa sorry, parliament is not only a lawmaking body. Parliament is a body to convey the concerns of the people of the country and hold the executive accountable. Therefore, at times we say aggressively. Okay? And when people in remote areas, when they hear us speak, to the media they learn, Hamari baat uthai gai. This shows an assurance the democracy of the country. Therefore, this panchayat role of the parliament is much important than law-making simpliciter. Law-making is important. Therefore, all the instrument of short duration discussion, discussion adjournment motions, etc. Uh, these are instruments where people come to uh, inculcate a sense of deep trust in the functioning of democracy of the country. Not only that, sir, uh, the place where you are, the Rajya Sabha, if you want a legislation to be in, in a very legislative mode and in the, in the administrative mode so that it should not lapse, Rajya Sabha is a place where you introduce these important things. That, 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 that's one and thing. You are now one of the two, three, four important persons uh, on the floor of the house who would be marshalling. Uh, Surely, why not? That's a good point because if you introduce in the Lok Sabha, the moment the house is dissolved, the, uh, the bill also vanishes, unlike the Rajya Sabha. That but the good right. thing about Raj Sabha is, you get larger time for debate because the number is less. That is a decided, uh, very clear advantage. Yes, in money bill, Lok Sabha is superior. I don't wish to denigrate any house. Both the house are equal and Lok Sabha enjoying more powers. But the larger issue where I would wish to compliment your channel is, at least through Lok Sabha TV and Raj Sabha TV, people are watching the quality of debate as well. Unfortunately, Hangama is shown frequently, but a good debate by parliamentarians who work hard is rarely seen. I remember when I had gone to address uh, the training camp of new uh, Raj Sabha MPs, MPs yeah. I was taking a course on lawmaking. And to my very pleasant surprise, a very eminent literary figure, I like to name him, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, pra Prasoon, that famous Prasunji, the famous Joshi. Uh, uh, Prasun Joshi ji, yeah. the famous um, songwriter and poet, sent me an SMS, just heard you and learnt a lot. I felt deeply humbled. Because what is important is that the people of the country now are developing a great interest in the working of Indian democracy. Because why they are? Now they know 
that India will not be ruled by any military power, a military general. After the disastrous experience of Indira Gandhi in 75-76, no political leader will impose emergency, put people in jail and impose press censorship. India will be governed by democracy, political parties, elections, periodic. Therefore, this new realization is invoking a new interest in the working of Indian democracy. And I would like to emphasize, please ensure that your channel works in a way that this interest only gets we will, richer we will, and richer. We will. And the youth icons like you who are in the upper house of the parliament, uh, the parliament, the upper house gets closer to the electorate uh, in more than one way. No, you see, I'm not an icon. I must tell you, I always view myself as a party worker. And whatever, I have been a union minister, the party office bearers. But that humble status of mine as a party worker, because the party has given me all. I will like my best to give to the party whatever, and also ensure that my limited intervention enriches the qualities of parliamentary debate. It was a pleasure talking to you, Ravi Shankar Prashad. Thank you. And well, come back again whenever we ask you. Thank you. That was Mr. Ravi Shankar Prashad, the Deputy Leader of Opposition in Rajya Sabha, answering all our points to the point, point by point.